garden tractor. Um, I got a bunch of, a few projects going around the house, but actually this is my favorite one. It's not a regular lawnmower, it's a garden tractor, so it's heavy duty. And this is going to become my off-road tractor, mud mower, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it is rough. I think I overpaid for it, but just a little bit. But I don't think I'm going to find another one like this. It's about 100. Um, it's somewhere in the early 70s, I think. And, yeah, it's a pretty cool tractor. So I'll bring you all over so you can see what's going on every year. All right, so this is a early 70s Montgomery Ward vir virable speed 15. Uh, 15 stands for actually 15 horse. It's got a four speed transaxle. It is geared. It is old, like I said. It is rough. It's got some surface rust. The rust ain't too bad. Um, muffler's definitely got one. I can tell you that right now. So let me show you some features on this corn tractor. It's got a really, well, it did have a really cool plate here. It's missing. Well, I don't think it's an actual plate, I mean. Unless it pops in right here where this is. But I know there's a little piece that goes down the center. It, it says arrival speed 15. That's missing. Uh, got these little pins on the side here. And they pull out. I'm thinking that's for a like a front plow or something like that. I won't need those, but they're just kind of cool. They're actually in a trunk in the back. I'll show you that. That is another thing I really thought was cool about this. But I was able to figure out what that was. Uh, it's got this ridiculous muffler that is in like the worst spot ever. It's just stupid how they put it there, but you know, that's how they put it there. It's got 16 by 6.5 by 8 front turf savers 23 by 10 by 12 turf savers on the rear got a 50 inch deck the deck exit where like the flat where it would blow out the crap it's kind of unique you don't see it do you well it's right there it comes out in between the rear tires which is really 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 cool so you can actually get up closer to things so I'm going to show you right now why that is unique. So you know about our Husqvarna here. It's got a 52 inch deck actually. But it's got this massive flap that makes this a whole lot bigger than 52 inches. So with this little garden tractor, you get up so much closer to everything. This is not the original seat, I don't think, because this supposed to be a thing for a back support and it's not there. So, it's kind of disappointing that's not original. But hey, what do you expect? Got a real nice um, uh, hitch hook up back there. I think these mowers actually came with a manual lift that you could get for it. So you can lift uh, mini farm attachments and all that stuff to do gardens. Four speed, got a little parking brake, little bead. Um, variable speed, okay? So, it's kind of cool, because this lever right here, it's kind of stuck, but it says slow and fast, slower and faster. Well, what's neat is, so with gears, you can shift into third gear if you want that kind of speed, or whatnot. Well, you can actually, while you're in a gear, you won't have to shift out, and you can raise this forward or backwards to speed up your tractor in that gear, so you don't have to shift. But if you do want to shift to a higher gear, you can crank that all the way up, and you can get maximum speed. Kind of cool how you can actually adjust your speed while you're in a gear. It's got one, two, reverse, neutral, three, and four. The dash here, it's got your simple throttle. It's got your amp meter, PTO, uh, I'll show you that in a second, and lock and open. What do you think that lock and open means? Well, before we move on, 
you got your key switch you got your lights I'm not sure what that's gonna be that or what that is I'm thinking about maybe putting a car charger in here to charge my phones on the trail or something cameras right here is supposed to be a choke cable which it's gone but the locking the lock and open part well actually if you watch this hood in a second it unlocks the hood so you can pick it up so you won't have to drill holes and run these uh, hitch pins and all that stuff just to hold your hood down it's got a locking one now the PTO supposedly when you take this forward that button lights up it engages the pulleys here which run down to the bottom which runs your deck uh, it's got a small tank which is pretty cool it's unique how the old tractors have the battery and the gas tank all up here actually comes in handy when you're climbing hills there is no battery the oil filter pretty rough like I said the muffler shot um, the engine is not seized up it turns over but it won't start now I'm thinking it's points but uh I got no idea where the points are on this thing because this thing has got some kind of pulley system up here pulley system there the alternator turns it okay and then the engine also rotates these pulleys here which go down and operate the deck but it also has like a drive shaft thing going straight through it to the rear and it turns pulleys back there which run the transaxle who knows confusing but unique right here I am going to let you see how it runs Allergies. Alright, so did you see what I, I was saying about that? How I think it's the points. Yeah, it's got spark. But it's got a weak spark and it doesn't start. So, yeah. That's my problem. This is the pain in the butt. But it works. I might leave it to put like a winch control on there or something. I don't know yet. Alright, the rim is on the back here. If you look, it's completely different compared to others. They have been completely flipped around backwards and drilled a hole and put a air stem in it backwards. That's how they installed the rims. If you look there, the rim is reversed like it's supposed to be and they drilled a hole and put a air stem there. So if you think about it, that center plate, whatever you want to call it, of the rim is not completely centered in the center so I'm thinking they might have did that to put the tires they flipped it around so they put the tires closer to the frame 
but I'm definitely rotating it because it gives me like almost four inches of clearance on this side and that side. So almost eight inches total. So if I'm going to be putting bigger tires, wider tires, I'm definitely going to need the space between that and the frame. So yeah, kind of awesome. Now, those pins up front I was telling you about, right there, was in a little trunk right there. I'm thinking about extending this little compartment here out farther and fill up the whole entire thing. So I have like a trunk, trunk under the seat, and I'll put some kind of locking mount there. So it'd be kind of cool, have a trunk, then I won't have to have one of those big racks, which who knows, I might do that in the future, but for now, that's all I need. Now there's that drive shaft thing I was telling you about. That spins the pulley with the belt that spins that down there. So instead of your belt slipping, going from here to there, on up and down like that, or a regular mower where it's laying down like this, like the newer garden tractors, going across the belly, you have a drive shaft that basically goes all the way through and powers this. So your belt's not gonna be getting as wet because of the full length of it going around and around. It's just a little belt here and a little belt there. Um, I cannot find the tag on this transaxle. This is a very beefed up transaxle and I have no idea what it is. If y'all know what kind of transaxle came in this tractor, I'd appreciate it if you could tell me. Um, this is not a um, Peerless 633, like most people think. It is something completely different. Although I wish I had a 633, but I don't. Who knows, this transaction could be a lot bigger than that. So, if you can help me out and tell me what this is, I would greatly appreciate it. So definitely, once I spin, flip these around, that will come out to about here. I'll be able to put wider, taller tires. Well, not too much wider. But if you look at it, the farther out this comes, the taller of a tire I can put on there because of the downward motion. So right now I can barely fit a 25. But the farther I bring it out, I might be able to get a 26, 27. I'm hoping a 27 and stick some 21s up front. That's what I'm hoping. I had the big turf tires that's in my shed. They're 20 by 8 by 8. And the rim is designed for a rear of a thing. Rear of a mower. So, um, you know, it's got the keyway in it. So, you don't want to run the ones with the keyway because that keyway is just going to grind down that spindle after time. Even though you put a bunch of grease in there. It's still going to do it. So you want to use the stock rims that come on your ride, unless you decide to put some kind of hub mechanism on the front. But I just stuck them on there for looks. Uh, the eight inch is too wide, so I'd probably do a seven inch, but it was barely hitting right there when I would turn. It was barely hitting that. So if I got to cut that like that, go down on an angle, so be it. So be it. It's not that big of a deal. But with it being narrower, I'm thinking I can get one more inch out of it, which would actually be a half an inch taller on the top, half an inch taller on the bottom. Um, this is going to be a pretty neat build. Uh, stay tuned for all the updates I do. I will keep you in touch, informed about every single thing I do. Um, so, I'm thinking of a color scheme for this thing. Yes, I'm going to paint it. I'm not going to leave how it is. I'm not going to fully restore it, but I'm going to restore it enough where it doesn't look like a rust bucket. It's still going to be an off-roader. 
it's not gonna be perfect. Um, I'm, what you're seeing here that is yellow, okay, will be black. Now, what you see white will be blue or green. I have not decided, but that's my two favorite colors. And brown, but I don't think brown and black will look good on a mower. The rims, I have not decided. Uh, just an idea for the rims. Um, I'll do a video where I'm going to get y'all to help me vote on what colors to do on here. But if you got an idea on what colors I should do the rims, whether I should do black or the other colors of my choice, uh, leave a comment down below. And, you know, if you haven't already started supporting my channel, it won't hurt you. It didn't, just help support me. I'd appreciate it. Uh, now, there might be some things I just take pictures of and not actually do a video of. Just, just to get um, ideas and opinions from the off-road community, mud and stuff like that. They think something will work or something won't. Okay, and then if, once I decide on what I'm gonna do, I'll do it and I'll film it. Okay, but uh, if you want to stay in touch with my build on what's actually going on with this thing when it's not being filmed, and I'm just bouncing ideas around, check out my Facebook group. Um, it is called West Virginia Backwoods Off Roaders. Anything and everything that has tires and tracks is allowed in that group. Or you just come, hang out, and see other people's builds, rides, and all that stuff. You don't have to do mud mower stuff or mud bog. So, yeah. Hope you like this build. Please don't get me a pile of crap about me not completely restoring this. Leaving it stock colors, leaving stock stuff on it, uh, off-roading it. Because I don't need the negativity. It's not good. Uh, I'd appreciate if you wouldn't do that. But if you do, you know, that's fine. It doesn't hurt to voice your opinion. And right here, lights are missing. For some reason, the lights are missing. They're not there. When you look at the front, it looks like a Mickey Mouse from the clubhouse a cartoon. <laughs> uh, I'll post a picture right here so you can see it. And yeah, come join my group, subscribe to the channel, support my channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Comment. I love interacting with, I love communicating with you guys, so please leave a comment. Oh, and the picture you're getting ready to see is the model number and the serial number. Um, if any of y'all know of a website, you could figure it out for me or let me know so I can figure out what year this thing is, I'd appreciate it. I'm dead serious. I'd appreciate it if you could.